rich. Yeah. Did you leave this on my desk? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so somebody's trying to tell me something. So should I start a segment about saltwater fishing for beginners? Absolutely. Well, maybe that is a good idea. Maybe I will take this and I will start a beginners to saltwater fishing segment, maybe per se. Maybe cover tides and saloons like we do in the Friday fishing forecast and then fishing the flats and then fishing for grouper and snapper, which we do a lot of, but I think we haven't shown a lot of fishing the flats and there's a lot of different techniques and things to do when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and maybe get into this and see what everybody thinks about it. Why don't you read it first? <laughs> I don't need to read this, Rich. <laughs> I've got 33 years of experience. I, I tried to wait for a uh, pause. <laughs> I'm saying that so you can erase it. He's a funny guy. I don't want to ruin it. Funny guy. Yeah, he's a funny guy. <laughs> uh, look what you made me do. All right, folks. All the fun and games aside, I wanted to do this video because I think it's... Uh, something that's important i think there's a lot of videos out there that are that talk about uh, beginning of saltwater fishing beginners for saltwater fishing and there's a lot of great videos out there ones that talk about what kind of rods and reels and line and and bait and everything else to use while you're out there and some of them have touched on uh, tides and what to look for in tides but i think a lot of them have kind of missed that and I, I want to concentrate on tides and salooners and actually what to look for when you're out on the water. It's, it's one thing to be out there and just be able to look at a piece of water and have an understanding or not have an understanding of what you're looking at. I'm fortunate enough that I've been on the water for 33 plus years here in this area so I have been able to kind of gather enough information to where I can go to an open flat and I can look at a flat and look at a mangrove line like you see behind me and I can say there's going to be fish there or there's not going to be fish there and before I ever anchor up or before I ever start fishing there because there's a lot of key elements that I'm looking for when I'm looking at a flat and trying to determine if there's fish there. So what we're going to do is first we're going to get into the tides and salooners and talk about how I like to kind of set up my trip beforehand and not have an understanding of where I need to be and what I'm looking for on, on these on the flats when I'm fishing for snook, redfish, and trout. So let's go ahead and get into that, talk about the tides and salooners, and then we'll talk about exactly what I'm looking for when I'm searching for fish on a flat or in the mangrove tree lines. I know I've talked about it before in some of the Friday fishing forecast, but I think this is going to get a little bit more in depth. I think this is going to be a multi-part series because there's so much information to give you out there. I don't want to make it too long so, to where it bores you. So let's go ahead and get into the tides and salooners and then we'll go into what we look for when we go on a flat and why I look for certain things on a flat when I'm looking for snook, redfish, and trout. Tidal flow is one of the most important elements to saltwater fishing. Most anglers do not take the time to grasp and understand how tidal flow affects saltwater fish. As most know, you want to have a moving tidal flow when fishing for most species of the inshore variety, as in snook, redfish, trout, tarpon, and fish like that. You have to have an understanding that fish are lazy and they want the bait to come to them. Fish will stage in certain areas that are ambush ready for the tide to bring the bait to them. Now let's go ahead and talk about how tidal flow changes throughout the year. Like in the summertime, we get negative tides in the afternoon. And in the wintertime, we actually get negative tides in the morning time. So during the year, those tide flows will change. And having an understanding about that and knowing, okay, this time of year the negative tide is going to be in the morning this time of year it's going to be in the afternoon will really give you a better understanding of where the fish are going to be how they're going to be staged up and how to approach those fish me personally i love a negative low tide 
if I find more areas and if you can find the fish located in these channels, deep cuts, potholes, things like that, you're going to find the fish and it's like shooting fish in a barrel. So negative tides are my favorite. Now I have get very good friends of mine that high tides are their favorite. Me personally, a high tide flushes out the fish. They go up into the mangroves. They go out into the open flat and really spread out. So me personally, I don't like a high, high tide. I like a negative low tide when it comes to fishing the inshore flats. Well, folks, as you saw, we talked about the tides and how important tides are when it comes to fishing the flats. Uh, I personally hated it when I'm fishing a flat and the tide went slack. I knew that right then and there that the tide or the bite was going to be off and uh, we would have to either wait out the tide or we would travel either north or south to catch either the end of that tide further north or the beginning of the next tide if you went south. So always remember that. If Let's say that you're fishing in the middle of the bay and the tide is starting to slack off. You can run north and catch the back end of that tide that you're fishing now up north if you have spots up north or if you wanted to catch the beginning of the new tide you can run south like towards Anna Maria, Fort DeSoto, areas like that. So knowing that you can adjust your fishing to different areas to catch tides. Ooh, dolphin. Ooh, hate those things. Anyway, if so knowing that you can run north and south to catch the back end of a tide or the beginning of a new tide when the tide is slacking off in the area that you're already in is a is another key component to understanding the tides and knowing that just because you have a slow tide or a slack tide in the area that you're fishing you can move and go catch a moving tide and you could actually if you let's say you work south you can actually work that tide back up to where let's say you put in at cockroach bay you could work that tide back up to cockroach bay from the south so that's a neat thing about it is understanding that and knowing that is really a big key so when you're inshore fishing on the flats having tidal movement is key you always want to have some kind of movement now that being said let's go ahead and get into the salooner periods and i've done many a seminars and I've talked about it on our Friday Fishing Forecast, how important salooner forecasts are. And most people do not, do not follow the salooners. They just don't because they don't have a true understanding of what the salooners are all about. And I never did either until I started guiding and keeping logs and understanding, wow, there's something to this salooner period. Now, guys that hunt and fish, they understand it completely because hunters follow the salooner periods almost to a T. My buddy Ernie who was on the boat with me this last weekend uh, was talking about how his game ca game game cam trails will show when there those game that game is feeding and it's funny because he said when I started putting it all together with the salooner tables it was like dead on and, and he said they won't even go and hunt if the major feed time is in late morning they won't even they won't go out early in the morning they'll go out closer to that major feeding time so you start adjusting your your patterns to that so let's go ahead and start talking about the salooners now with the salooners it all coincides with the moon so when you have a minor feeding time the moon is either rising or setting and it gives you an hour feeding time for that minor feeding time. So the, when the moon is rising, the moon is setting, that's the minor feeding time. Now when the moon is overhead and underneath, that is the major feeding times. So let's say that we have a full moon. When the full moon is overhead in the middle of the night, those fish will feed heavily, especially if there's no cloud cover and it's clear. So fishing on a full moon in the morning, that's why it's so tough is because those fish are feeding pretty much all night long on that full moon. So that's why I hate full moons in the morning time, going fishing on the, in the morning. Now in the afternoon, you'll see the correlation of that major feeding time happening in the afternoon, and then one late at night. And then the miners are typically very early in the morning. 
So having an understanding of that and understanding the salooner periods is key. So you always want to kind of take that into consideration. Now, salooner periods aren't always 100%. Weather has an effect on it. Uh, mostly it's the weather. So if there's a barometric change, if there's a storm coming in, or if you have a high pressure system sitting over you, it causes those fish to kind of shut down. So like when we get cold fronts, if you can go out before a cold front, man, the fishing's really good. Now after the cold front, when the clear blue skies move in, it makes it very difficult. Now I've been on the water to where we've had gray skies, a cold front coming in, and I could see the blue skies way off in the distance. And I would tell my clients, hey, the fishing's about to shut off because we're about to be affected by this high pressure system that's going to build and move in. And they kind of looked at me like I was crazy. Well, sure enough, as soon as that blue sky got over us, the bite shut down. And, and the bite was unbelievable. And they're like, how in the world did you know that? And I explained to them that the high pressure kicked in. And once that high pressure kicks in, scientifically from what I know personally, and if somebody knows differently, please let me know that the high pressure supposedly puts pressure on the fish's stomach and it it makes them feel like they're full and it makes them react completely differently they get lethargic so knowing that understanding that is is a key when it comes to you know frontal systems major or minor feeding time so if you can get on a major or minor feeding time with a system coming in oh i more times than not that i've i've been fishing in tropical storms hurricanes, frontal boundaries, anytime a, a pressure system is going to change and the lowering of that pressure system is key. Now, there's not too much more to say about the salooner periods because they're, they're pretty much, you follow them and you start keeping logs of what's happening and you'll start to see a pattern of, you wanna be in a place where the fish are so you know that you're going to give yourself the best opportunity to catch fish on that major or minor feeding time. Trust me, 33 years of experience, six years of a full-time guide being on the water every single day, they do make a difference. They are not 100%, but I follow, follow them religiously. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into what I actually look for and how I break down a flat, a mangrove-lined uh, area, an island, things like that. I'm going to cover it and I'm going to talk about the one, two, three transition, which is something that is very important to me when it comes to flats fishing and looking for snook, redfish, and trout.